Hi, this is Rue. Welcome to the Slash Gear Weekly Roundup. There were several big announcements from the Google I.O. Developer Conference this past week in San Francisco. The Android 3.1 Honeycomb update was unveiled, which will bring several UI improvements, including a new task switcher and resizable widgets. It will first arrive for Verizon, Motorola, Zoom 3G customers, and will even make its way to Google TV. Yep, Google TV will soon be running on 3.1 Honeycomb. That means that developers can now create apps for both Android tablets and Google TV using the same SDK. Also good news for Google TV is that it's getting Android Market, which has just added over 3,000 movie titles and has been revamped with new ranking, sorting, and filtering options. The biggest Android news, however, is the upcoming OS version called Android Ice Cream Sandwich. It will be a unifying platform that will work for all Android devices. This means that separate versions such as Honeycomb for tablets and Gingerbread for smartphones will all be replaced by Ice Cream Sandwich. The OS is scheduled to debut before the end of this year. Google's much anticipated cloud-based music service finally launched as Google Music Beta. The service works like a digital music locker similar to Amazon's cloud player because Google couldn't reach any agreements with the record label companies. So they can't actually sell any music, but they can store and stream their existing music collection. The service is by invitation only right now, offering each user free storage for up to 20,000 songs. Google's first two Chromebooks will arrive on June 15. One is made by Samsung featuring a 12.1 inch display, Intel Atom processor, all day battery life and eight second boot up time, price starting at 429. The other is made by Acer featuring similar specs, but has an 11.6 inch screen and starts at 349. Chromebook packages for businesses and education are available at $28 a month per user for business and $20 a month per user for education. For large organizations, these packages are easy to deploy and manage through a central web console. Also, a Chrome box option that looks like a Mac mini will be available soon for those who prefer a desktop version. All 5,000 attendees of the Google I.O. conference walked away with the opportunity to pick up a free Chromebook when they become available, a free Verizon mobile hotspot, and perhaps best of all, a free limited edition Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 tablet. Our guys Vincent Nguyen and Ben Beharin did an epic unboxing battle for the tablet. For a chance to win the tablet, go check out their video and leave a comment on our Facebook page letting us know who you think did a better unboxing. Speaking of Samsung, they had a couple things going on this week. Their Droid Charge went on sale yesterday as Verizon's second ever 4G LTE smartphone. Their Nexus S 4G launched on Sprint's WiMAX network with a white version possibly heading to AT&T very soon. And they uploaded a 12 minute long live demo video for their Galaxy S2, probably to tease us folks here in the US where the smartphone is not yet available, but coming very soon. Samsung also revealed a new tablet panel that could potentially be the retina display in the next Apple iPad. The 10.1 inch 300 dpi pen tile prototype is said to be twice the resolution of current same size tablet screens, but uses up to 40% less power. Samsung rival LG has come out with their own high-res display that also promises up to two times better resolution. LG is also trying to compete with Samsung when it comes to smartphones. Our very own Chris Davies did a hands-on comparison of the LG Optimus Big versus Samsung's Galaxy S2, so make sure to check that out and check back later for a full review of the LG Optimus Big. HTC unleashed a new video this week to provide a closer look at their flagship smartphone, the HTC Sensation, along with its HTC Sense 3.0 interface. We also got a hold of their HTC Flyer tablet, most well known for its optional digital stylus. Make sure to check our hands-on and first impressions on SlashGear.com. But just last evening, Sony surprised everyone with news that the PlayStation Network is coming back online immediately, but with a mandatory software update for PS3 consoles before they can rejoin. The phased update will spread across North America and then Europe. And some other news this past week include Microsoft buying Skype and Apple answering to Congress about location tracking. But perhaps more interesting is that an analyst reported that the next iPhone we're expecting to see in September will be an iPhone 4S and not an iPhone 5. He says that the iPhone 4S will be a minor upgrade with a better camera, a dual-core A5 processor, and HSBA Plus support. 
will also be available to Sprint and T-Mobile customers in time for the holidays. That wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching. This is Rue with Slash Gear. We'll see you next time.